Today, we'll be comparing two very powerful, very popular, but very different espresso machines, the Breville Dual Boiler and the Rocket Apartamento. For some first time buyers, these two machines might seem pretty neck and neck in terms of which one you should buy. But unlike in some previous reviews where I leave the conclusion slightly open-ended, I firmly believe that one of these machines will serve you better. It just depends on what you're looking for in an at-home espresso experience. So I'll have them both linked down in the description below so you can check your own local pricing. However, the Rocket is almost certain to be taking a larger chunk out of your next paycheck. Starting off by looking at the physical machines, it might surprise some to see how large the dual boiler actually is in person. It has that same standard appearance as the other Breville machines, but it seems to be supersized in almost every dimension. E61 heat exchangers are not exactly known for being compact, but the Apartamento is slightly more space conscious than most and looks almost petite next to this big red dual boiler. The Apartamento is a quite traditional build using an all stainless steel shell and drip tray, and everything from top to bottom is as nice to touch as it is to look at. With that being said, I also really enjoy the appearance of the Breville machines. I think they're contemporary and fit in well in a wide range of different kitchen styles. Both of these machines also put some consideration into the design of the back panels, which is good if you plan on placing it on an island or another space where it's gonna be seen from all angles at all times. Independent of the size and physical appearance, the build quality and finishing is also very different between these two machines. Having them sat here side by side, it's quite apparent that the Breville is a more consumer or appliance level machine. There's simply far more plastic used throughout the build and things like locking in the portafilter or activating the steam don't feel anywhere near as rock solid as you're getting on the Rocket Apartamento. A small but good example of this are the included tampers. The Breville's is made of plastic and feels very light, whereas the Rocket's is made of one solid piece of metal. And small differences like this can be felt all the way from the bottom to the top of both of these machines. Quickly running through the features of each of these machines, we'll start with the dual boiler because there is way more to go through. Three buttons on the front allow you to program in your desired single and double shot volumes, or run the machine completely manually. A digital screen allows you to dig deeper into brew settings such as temperature and pre-infusion, schedule times for the machine to automatically power on or off, and access things like the cleaning and descaling cycles. A knob on the left of the machine controls the hot water outlet, and on the right, a lever controls the steam. Some really nice added convenience features are a front water filling port and viewing window, a hidden storage area behind the drip tray, and a built-in caster system for moving the machine around. Now looking at the Apartamento, the list is almost shockingly short in comparison. Brewing is actuated by a manual lever on the right of the group head, which starts and stops only when you choose to stop and start it. The right knob provides hot water, and the left controls steaming. And that's really it. Now, if we stop here for a second and consider what I said about one of these machines definitely suiting you better, you might start to get a sense of what I'm getting at. The Breville has a laundry list of features that are going to make it more convenient, more repeatable, and in some people's minds, more enjoyable to use. Whereas the Apartamento has a far better build quality, but it's more of an analog and manual experience. All right, let's keep going and start comparing the actual performance of these two machines, starting with the steaming power. Both of these machines will offer you the ability to brew and steam at the same time, which will already be a huge step up if you're upgrading from something like a single boiler. However, in terms of brute steaming power, the Apartamento does come out on top, being about 30% quicker to steam the same volume of milk. Another feature absolutely worth mentioning is that the Apartamento features a no-burn steam arm. This dual wall construction ensures that it doesn't get scalding hot during use, which is not only safer, but also means that milk won't aggressively stick to the tip of it. This might not have been a feature that you've heard of or were previously shopping for, but I can assure you it's something you want. One final thing to note before we move on to espresso performance is that the steam arms are on opposite sides of these two machines. This might seem like a trivial difference, but if you're planning to place your machine next to a wall, you're going to want to have the steam arm on the free side to give you more working room. 
Shifting to espresso, surprise, surprise, these two machines take very different approaches. An E61 group head constantly circulates warm water through nine pounds of solid metal. This huge thermal mass is what allows it to maintain a very consistent temperature, assuming that you purge the group head first to get rid of any overheated water vapor that might have gathered after long periods of sitting idle. In comparison, the saturated group on the dual boiler takes a more modern approach, utilizing two pairs of PIDs and heating elements, one pair in the brew boiler and one pair right at the group head. This is what allows it to achieve an accuracy of plus minus just one degree Celsius, which is very impressive. And it's also what allows it to adjust the brew temperature anywhere between 86 to 96 degrees Celsius. Being able to adjust the temperature like this is a big advantage as it allows you to tweak your extraction for particularly easy or difficult to extract coffees, something that the Apartamento does not offer. And the dual boiler's advantages don't stop there. Probably my favorite feature on this machine is the programmable pre-infusion. You can select any combination of pressure and duration. If you wanted, you could do a very low pressure, get this, up to 90 second pre-infusion. And while you might not want to go that extreme, having the ability to adjust a pre-infusion in this way isn't something that many machines offer at any price range, let alone the price that the dual boiler is coming in at. Now the Apartamento will allow you to do a light pre-soak by holding the lever just before the actuation point, but that'll only last a couple of seconds. Then it has a mechanical pre-infusion built in as the group gets up to full brewing pressure, but it's pretty much a one size fits all solution, nowhere near the adjustability on the dual boiler. So as you might have inferred from that onslaught of information, the dual boiler is overall a more consistent, customizable, and in many ways capable machine when it comes to your espresso extraction, easily outpacing many machines or really any machines in its price bracket. However, if at any point throughout that espresso explanation, your eyes started to glaze over and you just didn't care about digging that deep into each espresso you brew, I would highly recommend you still consider the Apartamento. Yes, it's almost shockingly lacking in features when placed next to this machine, but the enjoyment you get from using such a high quality and analog machine are not things that should be ignored. For every inch that the Breville gains in terms of features and customization, the Apartamento wins it straight back in terms of build quality and enjoyment to use as a tool inside your espresso daily routine. If I had to make a comparison, the Breville would be something like a Tesla Model 3, whereas the Apartamento would be something like a manual Porsche. The Tesla is undeniably more technologically advanced, feature rich, customizable, but it might be lacking slightly in driver engagement and build quality. The Porsche, on the other hand, might be a little bit more expensive, but the build quality is there to match, and the driver engagement when you're using it is also there. It's a more analog, more raw experience where you're in control. Each brand, each type will have a dedicated fan base arguing that one is undeniably better than the other. Breville versus Rocket, Tesla versus Porsche. Which one is best for you? That is up to you to decide. So hopefully this video has helped you in making a buying decision. Again, I will leave them both linked down in the description below. If you did enjoy this video, please leave us a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.